What up guys, I'm Yanni Kikurva Diva and you're watching Real Talk. What kind of mother am I? Um, I'm trying to process it because I can be strict sometimes. Uh, but I'm a very lenient mummy. I'm a very sweet, you know, a very loving, sweetheart sort of mummy. Um, my daughter, for me personally, I think she have me wrapped around all her ten fingers. like. She know what to do. She literally knows what to do to really get me going. Like she's like, mommy, I want this or I want that. But it's just how she comes to me. Cause I don't know, she's my only, it's my only baby. So I tend to want to spoil her. I am single and happy. Oh God. I was in a very long relationship. Um, for about 11 years. Long relationship. I was engaged, all of that. To get married, all of this stuff. And then I recall, when I said, you know what, we cannot, I think I outgrew him and that was my biggest problem. So we became, we became friends, but not really lovers or anything. I just outgrew each other. I think we outgrew each other and that was the, the big thing. I'm happy dating and getting to know different people and different guys. Strictly dating. No Netflix and chill. It ain't happening. But <laughs> yeah, so I'm single and ready to have fun. What I look for in a guy, um, what do I look for? There's, first of all, listen, I normally have this whole list thing going on and I'm like, you know what? I'm single and no matter how people tell me, you know, I must write a list and whatever. No, so I'm write my list and when I look for tall, dark, handsome, I'm going to look for, make sure I say him this, him financially stable, make sure he's smart, make sure I'll be a sharp man, I look me. I can't understand, I'm going to tear up a list, I'm going to tear it up, I'm going to tear it up. Cause I bought five shot man and me like them too. So my camera. So I really just I want somebody that I like. I did not realize how important it is to really just like somebody. You know, somebody who makes me laugh. I like that. Not too much. Don't try be ugh. Yeah, try to be funny, I really don't it no land. I hate a guy who is bossy. I like somebody who's very humble. But him have it. So him have all that for boss and go on and show off, but he's just ridiculously humble. And I go for spiritual. Like I really love a guy who connects with God. You know what? You're no man to me. Oh, I'm gonna believe that God. Not no, bye, bye. Don't talk to me. So I love somebody who is very spiritual. And I'm going for handsome. Yes, I am. I'm a nurturer. I'm a sweetheart. Like I love to love and I love to be in a relationship, especially if it's a really good one. And oh. Listen, a man, I love to cook, I love to cater. And I think that's that's what I saw growing up. So it's so strange, but that's what I saw. My mom is the craziest thing. When my dad came home, he would come home and sit on the couch and my duty would be running to daddy, taking off him shoes, taking off him socks and bringing the bear, the cold bear. And that was it. So my mom taught us to really and truly take care of a man, look after a man. And that is why I just can't date any random man because Two tools them get comfortable with all the little things when I do. I'm realizing they work list, they don't make sense. So I can't give them all of my sweetness. But my mother raised us, because she has three girls, raised us to really and truly cater to our husband. Relationship producing, but why I felt like this was coming? I felt this was coming like 9.58. <laughs> it was coming. Uh, if if we I need a little water. Um <laughs> oh God! When is the Lord coming? <laughs> oh no, no, can't tell me that. I can't tell you no. What take place? I don't understand that. Poor oh, Jesus. But we're really, really good friends. He's a cool guy, um, you know, and he's a very sweet person compared to what persons think that he is just a party person and this, that, that, are all about craziness. He's really a cool guy, and I can only sing his praises because he's a really nice person. So. Honestly, when the public come and try to make it this big nastiness and, and yes, and you're seeing a Yannick and this and smashing and that. It's just a nasty situation. Um, I knew him a long time, about nine years now, I know you're saying. So he's just a really sweet person to me. So I don't know anybody else. So yeah, we're good. Not like that. How do I handle criticism? Um, I just don't handle it. It's like, you know what happened? I don't need them at all about. Is it because I don't have all the time? Sometimes it's not true. And if it is true, I, I don't care because I, I know what I do, I answer to myself. I really just brush it off. It's like I'm reading about somebody else. 
and it's so fascinating and funny. I, I think it's a safe zone I put myself in from school days. I do love myself to the point where I don't, it don't matter what you say. It don't matter what the critics are saying or what they're trying to, you know, it don't, it no matter. It no matter. Me love me enough and know I'm good. That's just how I deal with it. A plastic surgery and the curvy diva. Listen. People just chat up a bag of things. Unless someone got asked me certain little things and say, okay, can you give me some advice? <laughs> Otherwise than that, them just want to give up and fast and so. But I'm the time for them. If me go tell them about plastic surgery, I go tell them about my blood type, I go tell them if I wear a thong or big panty, I go tell them who I date or who I never date. That's just, I just think it's my business, really and truly. And then because I have the, the power to really do anything I want to myself, I go tell them about the feeling when I have around at the back of my mouth, I wish I have a joke. But that's just, hey, you yeah, understand? Persons want to know so much, and I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, I do. I mean, I've said that I've done, you know, my tatas and whatever the situation. They want more. How much more do I want, Father? But do my eyelid, my nose. What do I want? So I've, I've kept it real, you know, and let people know, say, hey, this happened, that happened. But persons still want to push more on me. Me here, some fix my knee. I'm like, huh? My greatest achievement, you know, moms, moms will say them, Pitney. Yeah. Overall, um, just tapping into the market, the whole thing of, of getting pregnant in college, losing my scholarship and literally come out to see a person saying, hey, I wouldn't say on top, but at least I'm not far from the top. So I've, I've seen that. I look back and say to myself, hold on. I said to myself, so I have a tendency to vision things and that's just my thing. I'll get up and I'll say, you know what, this is what I want. This is the goal that I set and this is what I must accomplish. And no matter what, nobody can deter me from it. And that's just my attitude. So my greatest accomplishment is actually doing this job, doing media, being in media and owning it and leaving a name for myself, you know? That's my greatest to date. Am I comfortable um, where I'm at in my career? Um, I'm not comfortable, I'm never comfortable. If you know me, I'm Aries. I'm never comfortable. I'm always wanting more, pushing harder. I'm very hard on myself and I believe that, okay, there's more to life. I think my greatest fear is failing. That's one thing. And the next thing that I hate about myself, I'm, I'm very hard on myself, but I just believe that I'm here to leave something. I, I want to be known. I want person to say, oh, Yanni, it's not, oh, the Yanni, what? No, I leave something behind, you know? So my daughter said, boy, if anything happened and, you know, my pass away or whatever, there's a legacy left behind and that's it. And I don't want to burn nobody old. I don't want to jump on the bandwagon. So when person say, oh, you are you saying, you're saying I left theme thing. You're saying I run him race them, I'm going to do theme thing. So you understand? So I tend not to try to jump onto anybody bandwagon, anybody journey. I have my own. And I know where I see myself doing movies in the long run. I know where I see myself winning an Oscar. I know I see myself doing all of these great things. Can you imagine I tell this story and then we pull back like, you know, a couple of years time when we win mask and say, yes, when she say it. So, and I don't think it's impossible. When I watch persons who, you know, want an Oscar, want something, I want an award, I check them back going same time, quick time. And I them born with go spoon and them mouth. And, and I like to say, oh my God, this, they were destined for that. Some random people work at Burger King and they miss something, the hard life reach them. So it's impossible for me to dream big and think big. So my, that's my thing. There's a, so much more to life and I, that I can accomplish that for me, this is just the tip of it. Jamaica is just a tip and I'm going to wave that flag and carry it throughout the world, throughout the Caribbean, wherever I go. I am Jamaican, I love my country, but I'm ready to take it to the world and there's just so much more to accomplish. So I'm not comfortable, I'll never be comfortable.